Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer deck tech. And today, we're going to be talking about Selesnia Tokens, except it's a little bit different than a traditional Selesnia Tokens list. And we'll kind of explain that in just a moment. So, as always, before we hop into the video, let me know in the comment section below at the end of the video. What do you think about the deck? Is there anything that I forgot to include that I did not? Just let me know in the comment section. So, okay. So, huge shout out to, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this, Zerwanuki, a recent subscriber that uh, was recommending that we do a deck with a special card that's new from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. And I'm not going to lie, I, I went through a couple renditions with this deck just because it was tricky finding the right shell. And obviously, I think you probably all know what card I'm talking about because, after all, it is the thumbnail card. It's not the first card we're going to be talking about, though but it'll kind of make sense once we go along here. So, all right, let's go and start off. So this is, I would say, like our early mana package. Obviously, we're playing four Lana Ralphs and four Elvish Mystics because I'm going to be honest with you, we really didn't have anything that great we could play in the one-drop slot in terms of like different token, specific token producers. So I just figured we'd play four Lana Ralphs, four Elvish Mystics. You know, they're really not even bad in the late game as well. So, you know, just a fan of those in general. We're also playing four Gala Greeters, which I guess is kind of like a mana card, but not really. Most of the time, we're going to be putting a 1-1 counter on this, but there are moments where we are going to make the treasure token or obviously gain the life. Uh, but yeah, it's just a really, really good card. Definitely a huge fan of Gala Greeters. So let's hop into the next slide. It's going to make sense now. So we're playing two Prosperous Innkeeper just because it's a good card that creates a token, but... The main card that we're building around is Old Tech Matter Weaver, the brand new card from like the uh, the big score. That's what's called big score from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Two four for three. Whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one. You can create a one one colorless gnome uh, artifact creature token, or create a token that's a copy of target artifact token you control. So very interesting card. And I'm not gonna lie to you. In terms of Pioneer, there's very very few artifact tokens that we can really uh copy to really take advantage of so there's a card on the next slide which is kind of going to be like the main combo so to speak of the deck but anyways we're playing for Ultic matter weaver i think it's one of the better cards in the deck i also really like it alongside bygone bishop we're playing four copies of it. i've always really liked this card whenever you cast a creature spell with cmc three or less investigate which spoiler alert every single creature that is in our deck is converted my cost three or less so we're gonna be investigating every time we cast a creature with this deck so bygone bishop is definitely very very good in it so let's hop into the next slide here so we're playing four copies of tireless tracker because it's a creature once again that makes tokens which is kind of the idea with the old tech matter weaver we need creatures that make tokens and specifically creatures we're also playing three Ginny fade jetmere second which i'm gonna skip over that card the i would say i don't know if it's the best card in the deck but i think it's the card with the highest potential explosiveness we're playing four copies of thousand moons smithy four mana legendary artifact when it enters the battlefield create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power and toughness is equal to the number of artifacts and or creatures you control so it's kind of like a card instruct but it's artifacts and creatures and then at the beginning of your pre-combat main phase you may tap five untapped artifacts and or creatures you control then you can transform it, and it transforms into Barracks of the Thousand. It's a legendary artifact land, taps for white. Whenever you cast an artifact or creature spell using mana produced by Barracks of the Thousand, create a white gnome soldier artifact creature token with this creature's power toughness equal to the number of artifacts and our creatures you control. So basically, it's the same token that it makes on the front side. So I would say that it's probably the best card in the deck. Obviously, you know, being able to make the, um, I guess, it's not really a car instruct, but in a way it kind of is a car instruct. You know, we're going wide with all these tokens and everything like that. So the the gnome uh, creature tokens are going to naturally be really big. But what's really cool is if we play the Thousand Moon Smithy, um, you know, like let's say we go turn two Old Tech Matter Weaver and then we go turn three Thousand Moon Smithy, we make a dude. And then every creature we play past that, we can either just make a 1-1 gnome or we can copy the gnome soldier, the star star gnome token, which can just, they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So definitely a huge fan of Thousand Moon Smithy. I think it's probably the best card in the deck. But anyways, the other card I want to talk about is Ginny Fade Jetmere Second. So I really like this card. 3-3 three, three for 3. If you would create one or more tokens, you may instead create that many 2-2 two, two cats with haste 
or 3-1 dogs with vigilance. So the main reason we're doing that is let's say, you know, sometimes we're not going to want a clue. We don't really want to investigate. Sometimes we're not going to want a treasure token like with Prosperous Innkeeper or Gala Greeters. Sometimes we would rather have a creature. And that's why I really, really like Ginny Fey in this deck. It gives us the option to play more creatures as opposed to just, you know, playing clues or anything like that. So definitely a huge fan of Ginny Fey. The card is sweet. And the last thing we have to talk about before we hop into the lands here is really, really simple. We're playing two Get Lost and two Skyclave Apparition as our main uh, removal spell. Technically, Skyclave does kind of make a token. I mean, our opponent is going to get the token, but, you know, it is technically a token producing producing creatures, so it kind of fits the theme, kind of, but anyways, and then Get Lost is just really, really good, and again, it creates two map tokens, so I mean, maybe there's a world where we, we, uh, you know, kill our Llanowar Elf, and then we make, make two maps, but instead we make them cats, and we have lethal, I, I don't know, I'm just, uh, at this point, I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm reaching <laughs> at this point, but anyways, let's go and hop into the Lancer, which is a pretty simple Gruul, uh, sorry, not Gruul, so he's saying Gruul, Celestia Mana Base, we're playing four Razor Verge Thicket, four Temple Garden, and three Brushland as our main dual lands that we're playing. We're also playing four Branch Loft Pathway, one Aganjo, and one Beseju who endures. Obviously, Ganjo and Beseju, really just free for the most part to be playing in the deck. And then rounding out our lands, we're playing two Lair of the Hydra, two Plains, and two Forests. Total of 23 lands in the deck. And as our spicy basic land of the day, we are featuring the brand new Outlaws of Thunder Junction Full Art Basics. It's one of the first videos we've done um, with Outlaws of Thunder Junction cards for the most part. And then I figured, you know, why not? We'll go ahead and feature the brand new lands because I really, really like these. Obviously, you know, you can really see it on the plains, uh, but in the forest, you know, like with the outline, you can see the forest symbol in there, which is definitely pretty, pretty cool. So huge fan of these basics in general. So don't go anywhere yet, though. We still have to talk about our sideboard as well as some budget options if you're looking to play a more budget-friendly version of this deck. So the sideboard plan is really, really simple. We're going to want some Graveyard Hate. We're in white. Rest in Peace is definitely the best option that you can play. And they only go for about a dollar, dollar fifty, you know, US dollars a piece. So definitely very, very cheap. We're going to want some extra removal. There's a lot of different options. You know, you could play, you know, more Get Lost. You could play Portable Hole. That's personally what I would recommend. But, I mean, really anything that exiles, like, other permanents is pretty solid. We're also going to want some Vampire Hate. Uh, Rakdos Vampires is everywhere in the format currently. And Pick Your Poison, I would say, is the best option to be able to take down those pesky Vein Rippers. You could also play some combination of Pithing Needles as well, just because, you know, you could name Sora Imperius Bloodlord, and then that way, boom, they can't activate their Sora. So that's personally what I would recommend playing. Don't be afraid to change up the sideboard based on your local metagame, though. And the last thing we have to talk about is the budget options. So it's really simple for this deck. I would say this deck is... Is, I mean, it's pretty cheap. The current list is only 209 US dollars as it's currently built right now, but that's, you know, including all the fetches, or not the fetches, the shock lands and the fast lands and besage you and everything like that. But, anyways, swap get lost. Just swap it out for what I would say is the next best option is fateful absence. Just make that easy swap, and then, I mean, it does almost the same thing most of the time, anyways. So, definitely a huge fan of that. You could also just play budget dual lands. You know, you could play um, like the reveal lands or like the snarls. Um, you could also just play Sun Petal Grove because you can get them for about a one dollar piece, which is pretty solid right now. And that's really it in terms of you know making the deck cheaper. If you want to build the budget list, and I have the link in the description below as well as the regular list, it's only sixty four US dollars. And guess what? All of the creatures are the exact same. I didn't have to change any creatures. The only thing that changed was the get lost, obviously, for the fateful absence and budget dual lands. So you still get to keep the entire core of the deck, which is pretty sweet. I want to say the most expensive uh, non-land card is the Oltec Battle, uh, Ma sorry, I keep wanting to say Battle Weaver. Matter Weaver itself is the most expensive card, but they only go for about, you know, six, like five, six US dollars a piece. So it's not like they're even really expensive for the most part. Um, But, you know, obviously like $64 for a Pioneer deck, though, is extremely cheap. So if you're interested in, you know, if you really like Selesnia decks or you like token decks or you like making clues or anything like that, I think that this would be a really, really fun deck for you to play. Definitely a huge fan of the new card, Old Tech Matter Weaver. I think the card is very unique and I think it's very sweet. And I wouldn't be surprised, you know, as more sets come out that the card gets even better and maybe even this deck gets even better as they print more artifact tokens. So 
that takes us to the end of the video here. Thanks so much for watching. Huge shout out to, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this again, Zerwanki, Zerwanuki, there we go, Zerwanuki for the suggestion for this deck tech. And huge shout out to our channel members, Ralph and Matt, if you're interested in being a channel member. It's only one US dollar a month. You get access to the exclusive Discord as well as other features here on the channel. So thanks so much for watching this video. I'm Commander Crane. And I will catch you in the next video.